Hello to all, my name is Aaron Levis and the following is a briefing on the current state of small satellite orbit determination. Over the last two decades, nanosatellites have become commonplace for academic, amateur, and commercial missions in space. In order to receive valuable data from these small satellites, they must be tracked up to the same accuracy as larger satellites. The primary entity with the purpose of satellite tracking is the United States Air Force. Specifically, the 18th Space Control Squadron tracks over 36,000 objects in orbit, ranging from large geosatellites down to satellites and orbital debris only a few centimeters in diameter. The squadron uses both radar as well as optical observation stations to provide data for orbit determination. While there are several observatories around the globe, the squadron only relies on a handful of stations to provide radar and optical observation. These stations provide data that the squadron then turns into reliable TLE information for all 36,000 cataloged objects. Each station will take several observations of the same object and relay the information to the squadron located in Vandenberg Air Force Base. The squadron will then take the data and process it through statistical methods and produce an accurately determined orbit. Statistical orbit determination methods are currently the most common form of satellite tracking. There are several types of statistical methods used for orbit determination. The method used by the squadron is that of the weighted least squares method. Another common method is that of finite differencing. Both of these methods apply a similar process to determine the orbit of an object. Based on the location and time of an observation from a site, a weight can be applied to each measurement. The process of statistical orbit determination is then to minimize the cost function reliant on random error. This is done by determining a variance-covariance matrix and applying it methodically to the observational data. The method iterates until the error is small enough to allow for convergence. Additional filtering methods can be used to improve the reliability of the data. However, some issues arise with ground observation data. With 36,000 objects in orbit and only a few ground observatories, it becomes impractical to track all objects to a high fidelity. This causes a need to prioritize objects in space by their importance. Unfortunately, nanosatellites make up less than 4% of objects in orbit and often take a back seat when it comes to tracking. For nanosats and other satellites pushed aside for this reason, TLEs produced by the Air Force can become unreliable. To mitigate the issue of unreliable ground observations and statistical orbit determination, GPS capabilities are now being used for positional accuracy. Instead of using optical and radar observations, GPS satellites communicate directly with the satellite of interest and transfer data in that form. GPS receivers work well on LEO satellites due to the large swath of GEO satellites, allowing for extended coverage. Once the LEO satellite receives a signal from the GPS satellite, it can then transmit the data on its beacon signal to a ground station. In addition, the GPS satellite may be able to communicate with the ground station to verify the coordinates. GPS orbit determination allows for position to be found within 10 meters. The idea of GPS orbit determination is enticing for small satellites so that they need not rely on the government to provide accurate positional data. However, GPS receivers are currently too large for nanosatellite flight. Pictured here are two GPS receivers that are flown on LEO satellites. As seen by the dimensions, these receivers are slightly too large, too massive, and have too high power consumption for a small satellite to carry in addition to its payload. To accommodate the growing need of small satellite orbit determination, Skyfox Labs has developed a GPS receiver that can be integrated with nanosatellites. The receiver is less than half the volume of the larger receivers and only a fraction of the mass and power consumption. PyNav allows for an accuracy within 10 meters to match the fidelity of the larger receivers. In order to mitigate ground observations for orbit determination, it can be seen that GPS capabilities may become commonplace for small satellites. One major push for GPS orbit determination for small satellites is to allow for autonomous nanosatellite docking. The two projects displayed here will utilize carrier phase differential GPS capability to determine relative position of the satellites within one centimeter. Both CPOD and OAAN involve three U CubeSats that will validate autonomous control for proximity maneuvers, rendezvous, and docking utilizing GPS data. If properly executed, GPS capability will become standard for nanosatellite integration, allowing for a whole new set of missions previously unavailable. Alright guys, that was a brief overview of small satellite orbit determination. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this is Aaron Levis signing off, wishing you a happy spring break. Take care.